Hello again everybody. I thought I'd just do a short one today. Um, I've still not started my treatments until next week, but I thought I would just check in with you people um, to discuss a few more thoughts that have come up for me today. Um, as you all know, I was, um, I was diagnosed with a form of cancer called myeloma um, a couple of weeks ago now, and it come quite right out of the blue. And I'd like to, as a therapist, which I am, and the trainer of therapists, I'd like to document my journey in the hope that it helps you people out there. And it, it's also very cathartic for me. So let's develop this relationship. And one of the things I want to share today is the positivity in my mind. As a therapist, I'm very pra pragmatic, not so naive. Um, and I know the potential dangers of denial, of telling myself I haven't got an illness and everything will be all right. Okay. The dangers of that is something called repression. Um, the human organism, the psyche is geared up in such a way to take the path of least resistance from pain to pleasure. So when we experience pain in our life, quite often our mind will get the pain and shove it right down into our unconscious mind, right down into the abysses of our mind. And unfortunately, I've said this many times before, that information doesn't is not discontinued um, and out of action it's buried alive so to speak and it impacts us probably even more powerfully from beyond the realms of our awareness so we're not too sure what starts to happen we push this pain down and it's we start to get mood swings maybe we start to develop addictions maybe we support we start to feel depression anxiety and really, this is our psyche's way of saying, or our unconscious mind, look, you need to look at this information. You need to honor this pain. You need to accept this pain. And when we accept pain, it can move through us. When we don't accept it, it gets stuck inside us and it manifests as all these different symptoms, such as depression, anxiety. So first and foremost, I must own the illness. I'm not gonna call it my illness. I'm going to say I must own the illness. I must accept I've got an illness at the moment, which I do thoroughly. And when I first was given the information, there was somewhat of a, a, a thundercloud hung above me. You know, you question your mortality. You question, you know, your right to make plans for the future. You want to make sure all your loved ones are going to be fine. Um, and yet... A couple of days later, my, my thinking has really settled down somewhat now. Why has it settled down? First and foremost, I've got a real good plan of action. Okay, My, um, my consultant has said that myeloma is a highly treatable disease. And I think I said this on the last video. That means me getting a really good team behind me, which the Grand Clewood Hospital have offered me. Um, I have a research nurse. I have a, a key worker, I have an excellent consultant, there's a ward there, the Envis ward, where I can ring any time if I need support. The other thing is that once I start treatment, in particular chemo, um, I, I could, I, I start becoming quite vulnerable for infection, that's a danger. Your immune system drops, so you become more vulnerable to picking up um, infections. Therefore, I've been given these tablets in. I think that one says Cotramoxazole, that one. And I've also been given this, which I think is a Cyclover, a that one. So these are antiviral drugs that I must take in preparation for my immune system weakening. Okay, so that's a good start, I think. I was also, I think I told you last time, I was given a drug called Zometa because my levels of calcium are high, which can be dangerous in the blood because they can cause seizures, whatever. Um, the preliminary action was to get my, my calcium levels down as fast as possible. And I was given a, a drug called Zometa to try and bring these down. So, back to what I was saying before. We need a good team behind us. We need support. We need support from our loved ones. But most of all, importantly for me, they're the, in the immediacy, they're the things I need to set in place. And they're all set in place. So I can feel somewhat secure knowing I've got an excellent team that are are helping me move forward. 
Not only that, they've arranged for me to go into one of the most exclusive places in the world to have treatment, which is Christie's in Manchester, to have the stem cell treatment. I'll get that right today, by the way, um, later next year. So like I explained on my last video, I'm going to go through this induction period of treatment. And then after Christmas, sometimes I'll go in for the aggressive treatment. But let's get on more of how I'm feeling the existential issues today. And I'm feeling really good. I've got a desire, a deep desire to live life to the full. I've not been set back at all in the last couple of days with, um, with depression, with doubts, with, um, oh, you know, this has really marred my life. Far from it. In fact, life seems to have an edge on it. My communication with other people have got this they've got this almost glow to it it's though it, it's it, it's enlivened me in a sense it's made me appreciate life even more and i've got a chance of having a good long life still um which i'm, I'm so appreciative of so my mindset i think is in tremendously important today i've done work i work for myself i have a good team people with me as well i am um, and we've been discussing the future of our training company and whatever and that has given me um, a sense of purpose every day of my life for me life without purpose is useless if i want to throw my hat in the ring or my towel in the ring and say that's it i've got this disease my life is over then it probably will be but i like to think you know we have a certain degree of control over certain aspects of our life without being naive that is without being in denial i know what i've got is a serious illness yet there is certain areas of my life where i can maintain control um i have we only all have 24 hours in one day the past doesn't exist the past is only a memory which is situated in us the future doesn't exist the future is only a projection that is situated in us the only time we ever have is now so why should i let these things that happened yesterday and these things why should i let them affect the way i project my future now why can't i just enjoy this time which is the great teachings of many ancient philosophies all we've ever got is this one moment and i feel good i feel quite content today i feel quite inspirational and why shouldn't i should i let an illness should i let an illness rob me of them feelings i have the choice i have a sense of agency surely you know so if if you've been diagnosed with this illness or any form of cancer and you've got you know you've got a root that can give you a good life grasp it life's too precious to to not grasp it i love life i've loved life for quite a lot of years now so you know let's live in the moment let's live day to day i'm making plans for the future believe me nothing's going to stop me making plans for the future if them flat plans don't come to fruition i'm not really going to care i'm probably not going to know about it but all i have at the moment is a projection is a sense of imagination and imagination as einstein said is a wonderful thing it's the birth of all creative ideas and we can create a life that we want within the imagination. And I imagine my future the way I want it. And one day I want to get there. I don't know whether I will, but one day I want to get there. So that's that. What other things have I got control over? Well, I've been reading a few things. Obviously, my bones are getting slightly eaten away by the, um, the calcium's coming off by the cancer and um, by the myeloma. So I've been having a look at ways, but what can I do to prepare myself for going into Christie's, for instance? How can I maintain um, some sort of, or how can I contribute to my well-being during this process? And one of the things I read, I love to swim. So I believe swimming is excellent for the bones because your bones can become quite um delicate with myeloma you know you don't want to do anything too physical contact sports maybe so today um, i got up i got up bright and early i um, had some breakfast thought what can i do so i went to the spa to swim not the shop the spa incidentally um 
And I swam about 60 or 70 lengths of the pool, nice and slow. It was very peaceful in there, really enjoyed it. And I also looked up that saunas can be very, very good for your bones. So I had 10 minutes in the sauna, done 30 or 40 lengths in the pool, another 10 minutes in the sauna, another 20 lengths in the pool, and finally finished off in the sauna. And when I got out of the sauna, I felt so good. You know, I thought, well, I've contributed a little bit now to my own healing. I can't do the medical part. I can't, you know, I can't do stem cell surgery. But there's things I can contribute to. And I think one of the most important aspects of, of the situation I'm in is the will to live. You know, I, I do understand um, the connections between um, the way we think and the chemistry that runs through our body. I mean, it's very, you know, we think in a certain way. The hypothalamus, the chemical factory of the brain, mixes chemicals in accordance with the way we're thinking. These chemicals are then dispersed via neurotransmitters, chemical messages through the bloodstream to, so that, to different parts of our body. So we feel a certain way and then feelings drive our actions. So the way we think at this present point in time is so, so important. Not just if you've got cancer, for anything in your life. So we need a balance. We shouldn't deny pain. Um, we can have what's called sometimes in toxic positivity, where you're saying everything's great, you know, everything's cool and whatever, and it isn't. And all that's going to do is you're going to repress material and it's going to manifest as depression, okay? A lot of stuff we stuff down manifests as depression, mood swings, addictions and so on. It's an energy, it has to find expression, and it finds expression often through these negative things such as depression and whatever okay so we need to be realistic first of all we need a degree of acceptance okay but then i don't like to use the term fight but then we must have hope somewhere there's always hope i've got a lot of hope i've got a lot of things in place that are really going to help me and i feel quite confident that i'll come through this but like i said before there's no future there's no past the the future and the past exists within us in the continuum of the now. We only have this moment. You show me yesterday, now. You can't. Show me tomorrow. You can't. You can tell me what's in your memory about a concept we call the past that doesn't exist. You can tell me what's in your imagination for the future about a concept that doesn't really exist, the future. But we've got now. And today is a good day for me. And I'd like those of you perhaps, you know, who are suffering with cancer or suffering with some form of what they call term, terminal, um, uncurable illness at this present moment in time, is that for the time being, live in the day. Enjoy that day to, to the full. You know, you might come to the end of that day and think, negative thing and says, well, what the hell should I do all this for? Because for me, my investment in life, in every day in life, and life shouldn't be wasted, is to have purpose. So if I did fall off my bed, so to speak, tomorrow, at least I have purpose in my life. You know, my, my, my life is about purpose. I think a life without purpose is futile. And I think that can lead to the decline of our health, quite frankly. I think if we've got no sense of purpose, in our life then that sets this ball rolling of the negative stinking thinking that gives rise to toxic chemicals going through our body that can so cause all sorts of problems so if we've got myeloma or we've got a form of cancer let's start to think positive okay if it's terminal and it's imminent oh, right we understand that really there's no comfort in words but if we've got a route out, if we've got a possible course of treatment, you know, let's give that our focus. And even, even though perhaps, um, you know, it can be daunting and precarious, let's let that hope expand within each and every one of us and move forward. Life's too precious. The thing that we should value most of all in life is time. 
And right at this moment, we've got the same time as everybody else. And that's just this present moment. Thank you. I will see you next week when I have my first course of treatment. Bye-bye now.